January 28th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Genesis chapters 48 and 49 from the Old Testament. After these things Joseph was told, Your father is weakening. So he took his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, with him. When Jacob was told, Your son Joseph has just come to you, Israel regained strength and sat up on his bed. Jacob said to Joseph, The sovereign God appeared to me at Luz in the land of Canaan and blessed me. He said to me, I am going to make you fruitful and will multiply you. I will make you into a group of nations, and I will give you this land to your descendants as an everlasting possession. Now, as for your two sons, who were born to you in the land of Egypt, before I came to you in Egypt, they will be mine. Ephraim and Manasseh will be mine just as Reuben and Simeon are. Any children that you father after them will be yours. They will be listed under the names of their brothers in their inheritance. But as for me, when I was returning from Paden, Rachel died to my sorrow in the land of Canaan. It happened along the way some distance from Ephrath. So I buried her there on the way to Ephrath, that is Bethlehem. When Israel saw Joseph's son, he asked, Who are these? Joseph said to his father, They are the sons God has given me in this place. His father said, Bring them to me so that I may bless them. Now Israel's eyes were failing because of his age. He was not able to see well. So Joseph brought his sons near to him, and his father kissed them and embraced them. Israel said to Joseph, I never expected to see you again, but now God has allowed me to see your children too. So Joseph moved them from Israel's knees and bowed down with his face to the ground. Joseph positioned them. He put Ephraim on his right hand across from Israel's left hand and Manasseh on his left hand across from Israel's right hand. Then Joseph brought them closer to his father. Israel stretched out his right hand and placed it on Ephraim's head, although he was the younger. Crossing his hands, he put his left hand on Manasseh's head, for Manasseh was the firstborn. Then he blessed Joseph and said, May the God before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac walked, the God who has been my shepherd all my life long to this day, the angel who has protected me from all harm, Bless these boys. May my name be named in them, and the name of my fathers, Abraham and Isaac. May they grow into a multitude on the earth. When Joseph saw that his father placed his right hand on Ephraim's head, it displeased him. So he took his father's hand to move it from Ephraim's head to Manasseh's head. Joseph said to his father, Not so, my father, for this is the firstborn. Put your right hand on his head. But his father refused and said, I know, my son, I know. He too will become a nation and he too will become great. In spite of this, his younger brother will be even greater and his descendants will become a multitude of nations. So he blessed them that day, saying, By you will Israel bless, saying, May God make you like Ephraim and Manasseh. So he put Ephraim before Manasseh. Then Israel said to Joseph, I'm about to die, but God will be with you and will bring you back to the land of your fathers. As one who is above your brothers, I give to you the mountain slope, which I took from the Amorites with my sword and my bow. Jacob called for his sons and said, gather together so I can tell you what will happen to you in the future. Assemble and listen, you sons of Jacob. Listen to Israel, your father. Reuben, you are my firstborn, my might and the beginning of my strength, outstanding in dignity, outstanding in power. You are destructive like water and will not excel. For you got on your father's bed, then you defiled it. He got on my couch. Simeon and Levi are brothers. Weapons of violence are their knives. O oh, my soul, do not come into their counsel. Do not be united to their assembly, my heart, 
for in their anger they have killed men, and for pleasure they have hamstrung oxen. Curse be their anger, for it was fierce, and their fury, for it was cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. Judah, your brothers will praise you. Your hand will be on the neck of your enemies. Your father's sons will bow down before you. You are a lion's cub, Judah. From the prey, my son, you have gone up. He crouches and lies down like a lion, like a lioness who will rouse him. The scepter will not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from between his feet. Until he comes to whom it belongs, the nations will obey him. Binding his foal to the vine and his colt to the choicest vine, he will wash his garments in wine, his robes in the blood of grapes. His eyes will be dark from wine and his teeth white from milk. Zebulun will live by the haven of the sea and become a haven for ships. His border will extend to Sidon. Issachar is a strong-boned donkey lying down between two saddlebags. When he sees a good resting place and the pleasant land, he will bend his shoulder to the burden and become a slave laborer. Dan will judge his people as one of the tribes in Israel. May Dan be a snake beside the road, a viper by the path that bites the heels of the horse so that its rider falls backwards. I wait for your deliverance, O Lord. Gad will be raided by marauding bands and he will attack them at their heels. Asher's food will be rich and he will provide delicacies to royalty. Naphtali is a free-running doe. He speaks delightful words. Joseph is a fruitful bough, a fruitful bough near a spring whose branches climb over the wall. The archers will attack him. They will shoot at him and oppose him. But his bow will remain steady and his hands will be skillful. Because of the hands of the mighty one of Jacob, because of the shepherd, the rock of Israel, because of the God of your father who will help you because of the sovereign God who will bless you with blessings from the sky above, blessings from the deep that lies below and blessings of the breast and womb. The blessings of your father are greater than the blessings of the eternal mountains or the desirable things of the age old hills. They will be on the head of Joseph and on the brow of the prince of his brothers. Benjamin is a ravenous wolf in the morning devouring the prey, and in the evening dividing the plunder. These are the twelve tribes of Israel. This is what their father said to them when he blessed them. He gave each of them an appropriate blessing. Then he instructed them, I am about to go to my people. Bury me with my fathers in the cave in the field of Ephron the Hittite. It is the cave in the field of Machpelah, near Mamre in the land of Canaan, which Abraham bought for a burial plot from Ephron the Hittite. There they buried Abraham and his wife Sarah. There they buried Isaac and his wife Rebekah. And there I buried Leah. The field and the cave in it were acquired from the sons of Heth. When Jacob finished giving these instructions to his sons, he pulled his feet up onto the bed breathed his last breath, and went to his people. Oh God, I just get so excited. All the way back in Genesis, you start foreshadowing about sending your son down to this earth to die on a cross and save all of us from our sins, not just the hand-chosen people, uh, not just Jewish people, but even back in Genesis, you're foreshadowing about this coming person who will um, be worthy to take over the scepter and, and this ruler staff. And that the Gentiles will be included in Abraham's promise that you gave him. I guess, I guess I just get so excited about how I fit into all of this. Um, all these generations and generations and generations of people going further back than I could calculate and yet all the way back in Genesis, you knew that you were going to send your son. 
You knew that your chosen people would include the Gentiles. You knew that you were going to provide an opportunity for us to have our sins forgiven and be cleansed through your grace. Ah, God, I'm just a little bit overwhelmed right now. I just get so excited about your word and excited about your love and excited about this big picture that I get to have tiny glimpses of as we read your word and live it out in our life. God, I just ask today that that excitement and that joy of, of being part of your chosen people, of being part of that promise that you gave Abraham so long ago, Again, we're back to you being intentional. Thank you so much for intentionally loving us. In your son's name we pray. Amen.